All right, may the Spirit of God give you the ears to hear. This is Sister Liberty Lane back with another teaching. So prayerfully, you have a heart that is open and available and that you have a desire to want to please the Lord because in all of this, we are doing it unto the Lord and at the end of our lives, we want to hear, well done, my good and faithful servant. And so it matters how you hear. It matters how you take in truth that does matter it matters what you do with what you hear and so most will most will hear this message and will dismiss it and will discard it but for those of you who actually want to hear what the spirit of god is saying i do encourage you to position yourself so that you have the understanding that you need we are living in a time where rebellion is you know, on the rise, more people are going to rebel in the last days. We are seeing a increase of rebellion in the land. And many of us were not taught, you know, order and living or growing up in a house with structure. Many of us did not really get the, I don't want to say the proper training, but the proper understanding of what submission to authority looks like we have many different authorities in the land or in the country where we live here in you in the united states we have presidents we have senators we have governors we have mayors we have police officers and firefighters and um you know, emergency medical people. We have all kinds of level of authorities. If you are a supervisor, you are considered some kind of authority. If you are a principal, if you are a teacher, if you are an instructor or a professor or even a pastor, even a pastor, you are some kind of authority. Or even, you know, just to make it basic and just to bring it back home, your parents, your parents, your grandparents, you know, are an authority, you know, growing up, I was at least taught to, you know, respect the elderly, respect my parents. I was taught to obey my parents so that I could live long. So I was at least taught that, um, you know, listen to your parents, respect your parents, those that are over you in the school system, listen to them, respect them, do what they tell you to do because they are your authorities. And I didn't really understand what an authority was. And most people don't understand what an authority is. And I think that's what causes many people to not want to respect authority. That's that's important because we are living in a time where it's normal and it's looked at as respected and okay to rebel against authority, most of the time you're going to see, at least in this generation, a lack of respect, a lack of honor towards our local authorities, which would be considered the police officers or any kind of law, law enforcement. You're going to see a disrespecting. You're going to see a rebellion. You're going to see a lack of obedience. You're going to see a lack of reverence because most are being taught that that's an okay thing. Most are being taught that you're grown. You're an adult or, you know, you don't let anyone talk to you. You don't let anyone disrespect you. You don't let anyone belittle you or put you down. And so this generation is really being taught how to rebel against authority because most, most of these people that are of age now, most of them did not grow up in a home where that was taught. Many of us did not grow up in a home where we respected our parents like we should have. Maybe at some point we did when we were young enough to fear our parents. You know, most kids, they fear their parents. But when they begin to get older and they begin to what they would call smell themselves, then, you know, that that fear that they once had for their parents begins to decline. And they begin to feel as though I can think for myself. I know I know life. I know how things work. And so. There's a rebellion that begins to rise. Matter of fact, it's just in us. It's in us. It's at the core of our sinful nature. Our sinful nature. So in your sinful state, it's in you to want to rebel. It's just in you to want to do that. 
Solomon says that even a child is known by their doings, whether their deeds be good or bad. So you can even look at a child and see that rebellion, you know, is bound in the heart of a child. Like at one years old, at nine months, you can actually see that the rebellion is there because sometimes you may see that this child is at a place where they understand how to manipulate or they may know how to use their emotions to manipulate their parents. So it may look like crying for the child. The child may, you know, I don't know if you've ever seen those babies where, you know, they're, they're in this person's care. They're quiet. They're good. They're behaving well. But as soon as the mom walks in, the child wants to, you know, over dramatically cry and throw themselves and act as though, the person that they were with made it hard and made it stressful. So even babies know how to manipulate and to walk in rebellion. They know how to do things. They know how to, you know, at that age of one or maybe earlier sometimes, they may try you to see if they can get a response out of you. So you may say, don't touch that, you know, Ashley, or don't, don't touch that, James, or don't touch that you know, Courtney or, you know, don't, don't touch that. And they may do it. They may, they're, they're going to try you to see what, well, what's going to happen if I keep touching it. Even at that age, they understand communication. They understand, you know, order. They understand order. They understand that I'm not supposed to do this, but because the rebellion is bound in the heart of a child, even in babies, it's there because We've been cursed with that. That's a part of our sinful nature. And so we see that there's a lack of submission to authorities. And because we can't honor and we don't know how to honor and reverence earthly authorities, then when it comes to our spiritual authorities, there's even more of a rebellion because we're being taught that submission to any kind of authority is is very weak, is very low. You are a person who is looked at as one who can't think for themselves. You can't think for yourself. You can't answer for yourself. You can't do for yourself. And so we're seeing how rebellion is getting worse to where children, teens, adults, you know, they don't have respect for the police. They curse the police out. They're disrespectful. They're disobedient. They do what they want. Same thing in the school system. You know, when I was in school, I thought rebelling against my teachers were a cool thing because I saw other kids do it. Although there was a part of me that felt like, man, that didn't feel right, but I'm doing it because I want to be liked by others or I'm doing it because it makes me look cool. But there was a part of me that would feel like, man, I feel like what I just did was wrong. I, I know that that was disrespectful, but I'm going to continue to feed it because I want to. I want to be satisfying in the eyes of my peers. I want them to accept me. I want them to embrace me. I want to pat on my back saying, man, that was cool. Man, I would have never done that. Yeah, this is what's happening. We can't respect our earthly authorities. You send your children to school and they disrespect the teachers. They disrespect the principals. They disrespect the teacher's aide or the teacher's helpers. You know, when they go to work, you have authorities. One of the things that we must respect is that authorities are everywhere. And if a person is in that role, then God has positioned them to be in that role. And we must learn how to respect that. If God has put this person in the seat in office to be the president, we need to respect that. Although, you know, not everybody in these roles are doing their job. Not everybody in these roles are doing their job. Some are doing a really good job. Some are doing it to the best of their ability, the best that they know how. But then you have some that do abuse their job. You have some law enforcement. You have some paramedics. You have some firefighters. You have people in an office and people in, in the politic industry who are abusing their role. They're taking advantage of their job. They aren't. However... It's not your job to disrespect and rebel against the person in that role or in that position. It's not your job. Although there are times where things are visible, we can see that this person is not the best in that role. However, I must still respect them. King David, before he was even king, he understood that. And I talked about this the other day. You know, you have King Saul, who is king at this point. So I'm talking about a point where 
Israel gets their first king and it's King Saul and he's not making the best decisions. He's not a good decision maker. Let's just say that. Let's just put that out there. He's not a good decision maker. And so King David is anointed to be the future king. And Saul is aware of that. And so Saul spends most of his time during his reign chasing after King David and trying to get King David killed. But David understood order. David understood authority. David understood respect in the honoring of who got positions in a certain role. He understood that. And so although there were things that King Saul was trying to do on purpose, he was trying to do things on purpose. You do not see David disrespecting this man. David teaches us that no matter what the person in this role is doing, I still have to respect this person. And so we can look at David's life as an example of still respecting authorities, although they have flaws, although they're not good decision makers. We need to understand that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That makes you a witch when you rebel. And so let me just slow down for a minute. When we're saying the word rebel, we're saying someone who is rising up against the authority that's set, rising up against the one who is who is in charge. So there is someone in charge. There is someone who is responsible. So like the president, the president is responsible for this nation. And then you have governors who are responsible for their state. So this governor, he's responsible for his state. He's responsible for providing funds and whatever kinds of relief plans in order to make sure that his state is running efficiently, running safely. He's responsible. And then you have mayors who are responsible for their cities. They're responsible for making sure that the streets are safe, that the schools have everything that they that they need to provide children with an education. They're being given that. They, they are the authorities in these roles to make sure that things run smoothly smoothly so we need authorities let's just make that clear we need authorities we need law we need structure laws are good structure is good order is good we need that without it things will be chaotic without it the planet would literally be on fire it would literally be on fire laws laws are for bad people i do want to say that laws are for bad people but we all need it meaning you don't have to tell a good person to stop at a stop sign. You don't have to tell a good person to go 25 miles or 35 miles driving through a school zone. You don't have to tell a good person, don't litter. You don't have to tell a good person, you know, not to steal things and not to th not to take things. You have to tell that to a bad person. You have to tell the bad person, hey, you need to stop at every stop sign. You need to slow down at a yellow light. That, don't, that doesn't mean... Speed up. That doesn't mean accelerate your foot on the gas. That means slow down. So you don't have to tell things to good people because it's already in them to do the right thing. Kind of like in school, like I don't need to tell this person to show up with their school supplies and to do their work. But I have to tell it to the bad person that's always late, always interrupting, always speaking when they should not be speaking. I have to tell it to the bad person. And so overall, we need laws because it keeps us intact. It keeps us in order and so we see that having authorities are important we need authorities in the workplace you need authorities you need supervisors you need managers you need someone that's going to manage the floor that's going to manage the employees that's going to make sure everything is running the way it needs to and when rebelling against against these things or against these authorities you do make their job harder because that shows that there's a lack of understanding of what their role does and how they benefit you. So a manager, a supervisor, it's important that you understand that as, as your role, you are an employee and that there's someone over you for a reason. You need that in the workplace. Those of us that understand that, we understand that when my supervisor or my manager tells me to come in at this time, I come in at that time. When they tell me what's my job, what's my description, I do that because that's to benefit me in the company. It's to cause me to understand that even though I'm an employee, my role is important. But in order for me to understand that my role is important, I must first understand that those who are over me, that their role is just important. And so I must respect that. 
I must respect it. I can't come to work and and you you rarely ever see this. You rarely ever see this. But you know, you don't come to work and tell your boss or tell your manager what you're gonna do and what you're not gonna do. You you don't do that. Otherwise, you get fired. You will be replaced. You will be replaced. You don't come to work and say, well, that's not a part of my, my job description. If they ask you to do this, maybe they ask you to sweep the floor or mop the floor. But you say, you know, that's not a part of my job description. That's that's not what I got hired for. That's that's not what you told me I'll be doing in that interview. But it doesn't matter. This is your authority now. So those of us that understand that we know how to respect authority and we do what we're told. So if we can understand this in the natural so we're about to get into the spiritual part of this. So I hope I hope you're excited because I am. I am because this blesses me as I am striving every day to submit and to break into my soul. And so I hope that this makes you just as happy because it's not a bad thing to submit. Our world is teaching us that it's bad to submit. You have women who are becoming more rebellious because they're being taught that you don't have to submit to a man. So, you know, there's no order even in the home. So how can we expect there to be order out there in the world? When there's no order in the homes where the the mom is the authority in the house, she's dominating, she's the one making the decision, she's the one stepping over the man and putting the man below her, she's the one that is coming off independence. Maybe there isn't a man in the home. Maybe your mom considers herself to be the man. Maybe she considers herself to be mommy and daddy because, you know, that's what the world around us is promoting. That's what's, that's what's being communicated. You are your own. You can be a man. You can do the job better than a man. You can be independent. You don't need anyone to take care of you. Go and get your own. You don't have to submit up on the end under anyone. Don't let anyone talk down upon you. Don't let anyone tell you what you should be doing and what you shouldn't be doing. Don't let anyone tell you that, you know, your kids doesn't come first. Your kids come first, but when it comes to proper order and it comes to marriage in a home, the man is the head. That's how God created it. So when God made men, he made Adam first and he made Eve from Adam. So Adam and Eve were one at the beginning, although they've been one. What I'm saying is Eve did not have her, 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 so she did not have a separate identity. So Eve was a kind of man. She is a kind of man. But when God first made them, the word of God says that he called their names Adam. So they were one. They had one identity. So this was Adam and this was Adam, his, his wife. She was bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And so when God made man, he made an order. He made an order. He made the man first and then he took the woman from the man. And so most women today are being taught that you have to go out and get your own. You're independent. Get your own. You know, we are running the world. Women, we run the world. We're taking over the world. We don't submit to no God. They're below us. And so you see a lot of the homes that are just completely out of order. And so what is that doing for the child? That is positioning the child to become a rebel. That is teaching and positioning the child to rebel against any kind of authority because they grew up in a home where there was no authority. They grew up in a home where there was no order. Oh no, I watched my mom take care of her own. I watched my mom be the father and be the mom. I watched my mom be independent. I watched my mom do everything on her own, not because... She had to, but because she chose to, because of the pride that says, I'm a woman. And I live my life in a way that says, I don't need a man. I can do it on my own. And to show you that, watch me, watch me do these things. Watch me get my own place. Watch me get my own car. Watch me get my own career. And again, these things are not necessarily bad if that really is the situation. Listen, I'm a single person. I've had a kid out of wedlock. I'm trying to do better. I'm trying to live right. This is the current situation. That's different. But for someone who already has a mentality of independence and that is their heart to be independent, to be better than the man, then that is out of order. That is rebellion. And we need to call things for what it is because the direction that our nation is headed in is very bad, is very bad. Jesus said that in the last days, the hearts of many are going to wax cold. How is that possible? Why is it that the heart of many will become more cold? People's hearts are going to become more cold. Why is that? 
because of the lack of submission in the land, because of the lack of authority in the land. People already have a sinful nature of rebellion. And so when that's not properly uh, addressed and handled properly, then people are going to do what they feel like they should do, what they want to do. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to do what I feel like doing. Just like the children of Israel, they begin to rebel against Moses. When Moses went up on to Mount Sinai to be with the Lord, the children of Israel decided that they wanted their own God. What are we saying when we say we want our own God? We're saying that we want to be in control. And so they made a golden calf and they did the opposite of what they were commanded not to do. That's why God had to give Moses these laws to bring back some order, to bring back some structure. Because without these laws, people will be loose. People will be out of order. And so how much more? So Moses was a spiritual authority. He was a godly authority. So the children of Israel submitting unto Moses is them submitting unto God. Them respecting Moses' role, Moses' authority was them respecting God and honoring God because God positioned Moses. God gave Moses his role. God put him there. Aaron, Moses' older brother, understood that. Think about what I'm saying. That was Moses' older brother, yet Aaron had to still submit to Moses. He had to still submit to Moses, and we saw that when Aaron and Miriam decided that they wanted to speak against the authority, when they felt as though, you know, Moses isn't the only one to hear from God. We hear from God too. Matter of fact, God speaks directly to us. They began to rebel against Moses in their hearts. They began to speak things out of their mouths against the man of God. And to speak against the man of God is to speak against God. You offend God when you do that. And so they offended God. And so Miriam, Miriam, Moses' sister, older, older sister, she was cursed with a very bad disease called leprosy. So one of the things that we need to respect is that God does, God does place people in a place of authority. Or he does place people in a role and we need to respect that. This is where I want to get to right here. We need to respect the fact that it's God that does place people in a place of authority. Why is it looked at as a bad thing when it comes to us submitting to spiritual authorities? Why is it looked at as a bad thing when we are taught to submit to authority? And so we have pastors that God gives People after his heart. So not everyone that's a pastor is a good pastor. Not everyone that is in that office and behind a pulpit has been ordained and given that role by God. But we still must respect the fact that that person is in that role. And in that we need to know how to submit and how to respect godly leadership and godly authority. Most are going to say no. They're controlling. See, that's your rebellious nature rising up. That lets you know how rebellious you are. That lets you know that there's an increase of witches that are rising up. There's an increase of witches that are rising up. Samuel, the prophet, says this in 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You might as well be doing sorcery. You might as well be doing enchantment because that's what God sees when you are rebelling. Yeah, that's to rebel. That's going against authority. That's manipulation. That's doing your own will. That's sin. So God looks at you when you rebel against authority, any kinds of authority. The spiritual ones are higher than the natural ones. However, we must respect both. We have earthly authority that God puts people in and we have godly spiritual authority that God puts people in and we must respect both although the spiritual is greater than the natural we still must respect both and so what God sees when he sees a people that are rebelling when he sees a people that wants to disobey and that wants to be stubborn and that wants to just do their own thing they don't want to hear what's being said they disagree they feel as though they can do a better job Miriam and Aaron felt as though they could do a better job. They could do a better job. Most people feel as though 
You know, the president isn't the best person to be in that position. They feel as though I could do a better job. That's the rebellion in us. You feel like this pastor who is hearing from God and he's making these decisions as he's being led by the spirit of God. And you know that he is. You know that the hand of God is on him. You know that he's hearing from God because God's presence is here. God's presence is in the place. And so there's evidence that this person is hearing from God. But because of the power and the glory on this person, you are jealous. You are envious. You feel as though you can do better than the person. You feel as though, man, if I was the pastor or if I was the first lady, then I'll be better. I'll be greater. I'll, I'll switch things up. I'll have things going this way. I'll make the people do this. I'll take us here if I was the one in position. And so your heart is rebelling because that's you in your simple state. That's you in your simple state. You are a rebellious person. You are a rebellious person. You will curse God. Many people are cursing God. That's the thing. If we are not having order in our homes, then we cannot expect to have order outside of the home. And if we can't, if we can't respect earthly authority, then you can't expect people to respect the overall authority because God is the overall authority. God is the supreme judge. He's the highest. He cannot be overruled. He cannot be overthrown. He cannot be voted in and voted out. He's the overall judge. But you got people in their sinful state who curses God, who curses God, who speaks against God. Yeah, the children of Israel, they did that. We can't see this God, Moses. Why does God only talk to you? We're going to make our own God one that we can see, one that we can feel. Yeah, one that we can hear from as we are seeing him right now. This is what people are doing. They don't want to submit to godly authority because they've already lived in a society that says to submit is control. Oh, you're submitting? That's control, but it's so hypocritical because... We live, the point that I'm making is that we live in a world where authorities are everywhere. We, we live in a world where, where there are authorities everywhere. In the home, there's authorities. At work, there's authorities. At school, there's authorities. On the road, there's authorities. Everywhere that you look, there's authorities. And so you can't avoid authorities. You can't avoid them. To submit isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. Your world is telling you that it's bad. Your world is trying to make you a witch. Your world is trying to make you a witch. They're trying to get you to rebel. They're trying to teach you that rebelling really isn't rebelling. It's just you standing up for yourself. They're trying to call it something else. They're saying what is really bad. They're trying to make it good. They're trying to make it sound good. They're telling you that it's good. Hey, that's not rebellion. That's not rebellion. You're not being a rebel because you stand up for yourself. You're not being a rebel because you speak your mind. We live in a country where... Everyone has a freedom of speech. You have your, you have rights. You have freedom of speech to speak your mind, to speak your heart. That's not rebellion. You know, that's not witchcraft. That's not you being disrespectful against that authority. That's you just, you know, you're putting your foot down. You're speaking your mind. You're speaking your heart. You're letting the person know how you really feel and where you stand. And so this is what's being taught. Rebellion is not being looked at as rebellion. It's being looked at as something, something else. Submission is not being looked at as submission is being looked at as something else. Oh no, that person is weak. Oh, you all are being controlled. Then, you know, when, because we don't see this nowadays, we don't see people submitting to spiritual authority like we should. And I'm more so talking about leadership and, and pastors in the house of God that God has orchestrated and God has set up. It's important to submit to those that God Okay, so we're bringing, we're making sure that God is the center of what I am saying. God is the one that sets order up. Okay, if we, if we truly are men and women of God, so I'm talking to the believers right now. I'm talking to the believers. I'm talking to those that have ears to hear. If we really believe that God is the overall authority, if we really believe that God truly loves us, and God is for us and not against us, then why would God set bad people over us if we are not bad people? Meaning we're not we're not trying to look for people that's going to 
cover us as we're in sin. But we are trying to be a people who actually wants to please God. We're not trying to be people who wants to live double lives and want to live some days in the house of God and some days in the world. No, I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about those who sincerely, genuinely want to live for God for real. Like, listen, I just want to live for God for real. Then you have to trust that God won't set bad people over you. If God really loves you and if you believe that God loves you, I can't say that. I know God loves me, but I don't believe that God is doing things for my good because the word of God says that he makes all things work together for the good of those that are the called according to his purpose. He makes all things work together for the good of them that are the call. So if I believe that God is making things or if God is working things out for my good, then I have to believe that anybody that God sets over me is going to be for my good. Why? Because wait a minute, I said God loves me. Right. God loves me. So God is going to set healthy people over me because God does raise up healthy people. They're out there. I know that they're not many. Unfortunately, they're not many, but they are out there. They are out there. And so in that, I need to understand my position when it comes to these godly authorities, these spiritual authorities. I need to make sure because, again, the world has really messed us up. You don't you don't realize it. I, I can't. I can't verbalize that enough how much the world has messed us up because many of us, we were rebels in the world. Before we came to Christ, we was rebels. I know I was one. I rebelled against authority. I talked back to my mom. I disrespected my mom. I did not listen to the, th to the things that she told me. I did what I wanted to do. That's rebellion. And so now coming into the body and having to submit, that was a big thing for me because I already felt like I'm grown. You know, I'm grown. Number two, I already felt like I don't need to tell anyone what I do and where I go and who I'm with. I'm grown. I'm grown. I don't need to be given accounted for because I am grown. I was I was taught that in the world. And so Sister Liberty, it took me some time to get to where I am now. I've been in the faith consistently for 14 years. And I am just now getting to that place where I am submitted to my God-given authority because to submit to them is to submit to God. To honor them is to honor God. And so many of the churches are out of order. There's so many things that are out of order, but that has to be another video. But if my home isn't in order, how can I expect the house of God to be in order? When there's order in a home, then, it, then there can be order in the church. And so when it comes to men and women of God, when it comes to pastors and first ladies and bishops and reverends and people in their appointed roles, I need to know and I need to understand that I need to know my place and how I should be engaging them. Because again, to honor these, whoever these are, is to honor God. When I submit to what I'm being told, whatever the pastor is telling me, again, God loves me. I have to keep bringing that in there because if I really believe that, if I really believe that God loves me, then I'm going to believe that he's working things out for my good. He's not going to put me in harm's way. If he set these people over me, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. And so I have to respect them. I'm looking for a particular um, scripture, but I have to respect them. If they're telling me to do things that are not causing me to sin against God. Okay. Think about that. If they're telling me, Hey, we need to love more. Most people don't even want to hear that. We need to love more. Hey, God is wanting us to get rid of certain things that was a part of who we were in the world. It represented who we were in the world. You know, the fake identity that we took on. God is wanting us to get rid of that. Certain things was hard for certain individuals because there, there was a stronghold on the things that they took on. And so now to let it go, you're really, you're really breaking into my soul, but God is wanting us to get rid of certain things. So I guess I'll be more specific. Hopefully you can handle this, you know, getting rid of the, the fake hair, you know, the weave, the fake nails, the fake lashes, you know, all of the hundred pounds of makeup that was hard for some people. And so when God gave us a leadership to present to the rest of the congregation, you know, many people were offended. Wait a minute now. 
Okay, I get that I got to love my brothers and my sisters, but you're telling me to get rid of stuff that makes up me. I don't think that it's that serious. I don't think that it's that, it's that necessary. I don't think that there's anything wrong with wearing weave. I'm not going to go to hell for it. I'm not going to go to hell for wearing weave. I'm not going to go to hell for wearing fake nails. I'm not going to go to hell for wearing lots and lots of makeup. You want me to get rid of this, this dress, this short dress? Well, I'm not going to go to hell for it. Then we try to figure out what we can and cannot go to hell for. And so that's that rebellious part of us that says, well, it's not going to damn me to hell. And so because our mindset tells us I can't go to hell for that. And so I don't really have to give it up. That rebellious part of us says, I don't really have to do what you're saying because I can't go to hell for it. God knows my heart. And we don't realize that the things that we're holding on to is in the way of where God is trying to take us. How can God make us a holy people if we can't get rid of the unclean things? If we can't get rid of the things that are unclean, the things that are defiling? How can God... We say that, God, I want more. God, I want to go where you're calling me. God, I want to be who you're wanting me to be. But God is saying, but you can't even get rid of simple things. Why is that so hard for you? If it's hard for you, then it's because that thing has your heart. That thing is attached to your heart. If it's hard for you to get rid of simple things, and it may, I don't know, maybe it's not as simple as I'm making it. Maybe it's not that simple for you. Maybe it's hard. Sister Liberty, like, no, this is hard. You're telling me to get rid of the music. But what if God is wanting you to do that? What if God is telling the minister, you need to get rid of these things? Remember, God loves you. If you believe that God loves you, then God is not going to put more on you than you can bear. God knows what you can handle. God is not trying to hurt you. God is not trying to break you. God is trying to make you. And the only way for God to make you, he has to stretch you. So he's going to tell you things that you may not want to hear. That you may not want to hear. He's going to tell you to get rid of the fake stuff. He's going to tell you to get rid of the, the old clothing that represented the old you. Hey, that's no longer you anymore. The short skirts, the low cut tops, you know, the, the high heels, the 100 pounds of makeup, the big hoop earrings, the 50 pounds of hair. That's no longer you anymore. I'm making you a new creature. The word of God says, behold, I make all things new. All things are passed away. That's no longer you anymore. I'm trying to raise unto myself a holy people. And so when you submit to my authority, when you do what those that I put over you tell you to do, then you are not just obeying them. You are obeying me. You are obeying me. When we, when we listen to those that God set over us, we are pleasing God because we understand that we did not put these people in these roles. I did not make this person a pastor. Neither did this person make themselves a pastor as well. God put this person here. God put that person there for a reason. I have to respect that. I talked about that the other day of how, you know, we got to respect the fact that God does the choosing. Let's just respect the fact that God is the one in control. And whether or not we like this person that's a pastor or we like this person that's a minister, God put them there. And we can't do anything about that but respect it. Either I'm going to respect the fact that God put this person here or I'm going to rebel. I'm going to disobey everything that, the, everything that the person says. I'm going to just do the opposite because I don't like the person. Maybe I'm envious. Maybe I'm jealous of the person. I don't think the person is doing a good job in their role. Matter of fact, I feel like I can do better. And so I'm going to do the opposite of everything that they tell me to do because I'm rebellious. I'm rebellious and I feel as though I can do a better job. God will cut you off. God will cut you off. If you can't submit to his authority, God will replace you. You better ask King Saul. God replaces people. God gets rid of people like he did Achan. Achan disobeyed. Those are simple instructions. Achan disobeyed. Okay, well, I got to get rid of you because... That disobedience, that rebellion, that can affect the rest of the congregation. That can cause others to feel as though, well, maybe I should rebel too. Well, maybe I should do what I want to do too. Oh no, God has to get rid of those people before they pollute the rest of the congregation. And so we don't want to be the kind of people that rebels against what God is doing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I found it. But we want to be those who submit to God. We want to be those who obey God and who God puts in a place of authority. We got to respect our authorities. If we look out to the world right now, we see how more and more people are disrespecting authorities. More and more people are rebelling against authorities. I'm sorry, my little person is here. Oh, come on, baby. You want to come in the video with mama? You want to come and teach with mama? Come on. <laughs> 
Say good morning, everyone. Say good morning. Say good morning. You say good morning. This is Nehemiah. Okay, so we can see how the world is rebelling more and more and more against the authorities. And that should let us know where our world is, the current state of our world. That should let you know the current state of your world. And what's happening right now? What's happening right now? Yeah, there is no order in the homes of the people. And so how can we expect there to be order outside of the home? So the writer of Hebrews says this. This is very important. This is Hebrews 13. Remember them which have rule over you. What is it saying? Be mindful. Consider those that God have, has placed over you who have spoken unto you the word of God. Your pastors, your ministers, they are the ones that deliver you the message. They preach to you the word of God. Whose faith follow. You see the evidence of holiness in your lives. You can so the word of God says, mark the perfect man. You can look at this individual and know that, no, this person is faithful. How do I know that? Because they're consistent. When I look at their lives, they're consistent. And so it says, faith follows. So they are, these are not just vain people or people in a role. And, you know, they're, they're living contrary to what their role requires of them. This is not that. It says, faith follows considering the end of their conversation. Remember what they tell you when they counsel you, when they give you guidance, when they give you godly wisdom. Remember what they're saying. It says, let me go down. It says this down in verse 17. It says, obey them that have rule over you and submit yourself unto them. We don't like that word submit because we feel as though we're losing some control. We're losing some power. I don't like that word submit. I feel as though people are going to walk all over me. I'm, I feel as though people want me to be a doormat. People want me to be a servant. Listen, humble yourself. Humble yourself. God, he resists the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. Humble yourself. A prideful person is going to miss this. A prideful person is going to have a hard time submitting because they already feel as though to submit to this pastor or to this minister is giving them control. They do have control of you. They watch and labor for your soul. That's what it says. It says, for they watch for your soul as they must give an account. These are the ones that are praying for you. When you are going through stuff at home that you think nobody knows. So let me add this. Those that God have put in certain positions, they have more grace. They have more authority. They have more access to God. So God Tells them things about you that God doesn't directly tell you. And God does that to hide pride. God does that to keep keep us humble. So this pastor, he has a lot more authority. He has a when I say authority, I'm saying he has a lot more authority in the spirit. The demons, oh, they tremble when he opens his mouth, when she opens her mouth. Okay. And then they have a lot more access to God. God speaks directly to them. They have a lot more power. They have a lot more on them than you do. Let's just respect that. God placed them. God placed them there for that reason. And so because God put them there, he has to give them more. To whom much is given, much is required. So God has to give people in those roles a lot more. And so God shows them things that you don't think nobody knows. And as he's showing them, they're lifting you up in prayer. Like they're praying for you and you know, you don't, you don't understand why you've not fallen away yet. You don't understand, you know, why you are still fighting every day. Although there are moments where you want to walk away, you don't realize that it's their prayers that God is hearing, you know, because God has given them greater access. It's their prayers that God is hearing. He's respecting them. He's respecting their prayers. He's answering their prayers on behalf of you. So that's why it's important to submit to our God-given authority because they, they watch for you. So they're praying for you. Things that you don't even know that they're praying about. God is showing them. And God does that on purpose. Now let me show you what this person is dealing with. Let me show you what this person just did. Let me show you what this person is about to do. And they pray for you. They pray for you. That's a service. They pray for you as they give an account. They have to give an account for you. You don't want them to be praying for you. You know, grudgingly. You don't want them to feel... You know, when they go before God on your behalf, you don't want them to be like, well, Lord, I don't really know what to say about this one except have mercy. And I think it says that it says that they may do it with joy exactly and not with grief for that is unprofitable for you. You don't want them to go 
on behalf of you before God and they're doing it with a grudging heart. You want them to be happy to pray for you. You want God to open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing when they open up their mouths and when they labor and pray for you. You want God to, to answer them speedily like, no, Lord, what they are praying and what they are saying about me, I need you to do. You want them to be able to ask God to promote you in the spirit. You want them to be able to speak blessings over you while they're in their prayer time for you. You want them to be happy to go before God on behalf of you. You don't want them to be, you know, trying to come up with a prayer and trying to think about what they should be praying about for you. You don't want that. You don't want them to. You don't want their prayers to be just, oh, God, have mercy on that one. Because I don't know what else to pray because the person is so rebellious. I don't know what else to pray, God. I know that I'm there, God-given authority, but I don't know what else to pray except have mercy. You don't want that to be said of you when you go before, when they go before God. You want those that are over you, you want them to be happy to pray for you. You want, you want them to speak for God to rain down some great things, some new things on behalf of you. And so it says that it's when they when they go to God on bad terms on behalf of you, it doesn't benefit you. It doesn't benefit you. So, yeah, that's that's about all the time that I have. We need to learn that submission is not a bad thing. Your world is teaching you that it's bad. Your world is lying to you. Social media, you know, the culture, the things that you watch on TV, they're trying to teach you how to rebel. They're putting that in the shows. They're putting that in the entertainment for you to rebel. They want you to hear something else. They don't want you to hear submission because they look at submission. They're making submission out to be a bad thing. They're making submission out to be a bad thing. Oh no, it's bad to submit. It's wrong to submit. Don't submit to them. You know, you are not obligated to submit to and, and, and to bow to any man. That's how they're looking at it. Oh, y'all worship men. You all are bound to men. You all are in a cult. You all are being brainwashed. You all are being tricked. And these are coming from people who live a lifestyle of rebellion. They're witches. They are witches. You got witches telling you not to submit to godly authority. I'm telling you, we need ears to hear. We need ears, ears to hear in these last and evil day. If I truly love God like I say I do, then I, I respect the fact that God does put people in a place of authority. And to respect them, to submit to them, whatever it is that I am being told to do, again, godly, healthy, godly leadership is not going to tell you to do anything that would be sin against God. Because they come from God, right? Moses came from God. Abraham came from God. Joshua came from God. David came from God. Came from God. We have to respect the fact that this is what God does. And that if I believe God really loves me, and if I love him, then he's going to work things out for my good. And so to submit is to submit. Yeah, I'm submitting unto God. You tell, I tell people that all the time. Listen, I'm submitting unto God. God has gave me this person. You say, well, God speaks to all of us. God speaks to me too. Yeah, but God doesn't speak to you like he speaks to this person that he's put in this role. We got to respect that. God spoke to the children of Israel, but God didn't speak to everyone like he spoke to Moses. No, follow my order. There's order in heaven, and so there must be order on earth. And so that's my message. I may do a part two if the Lord permits, but God bless you in Jesus' name.